Welcome back everyone to Jeff live here at the Jeff Assembly in Vietnam. We have a really exciting interview coming up and I want to thank Minister David Paul who is the Minister of Environment and Assistant to the President of the Marshall Islands here for being here with us today. Thank you so much. So I want to start off about you and your passion and how you, you got into the role that you are in now and what really drove you um, to, to being a pioneer in, in climate action. Well, uh, well, thank you for, for having me uh, on your program. And it's really a pleasure to be, to be here in uh, Vietnam, Da Nang, for the, uh, for the uh, Jeff um, Assembly. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really uh, the, the issue of uh, climate change itself is, is, uh, is pretty much generic in the Marshalls because we really are at the forefront of, uh, of climate change. And, you know, you know, if you turn on the news media here and there, whether in America or anywhere else, a lot of folks are trying to deny that the, um, the issue of climate change doesn't exist. Well, I, I welcome them to come to the Marshall Islands to see, you know, what, what climate change really is and for them to understand and to see for themselves firsthand the our climate change is actually affecting the Marshall Islands and like many other vulnerable countries and especially uh, small island nations like the Marshalls, we are really at the forefront of climate change yet the least responsible for the cost. I know that's a discussion that, that has been going on on and on and in 2015 we all had a lot of hope um, and excitement around the Paris Climate Agreement and we're about ten, two years now so well, how do you feel about the progress? Have we seen enough progress on climate action since then? Well, um, first of all, the, the Paris Agreement really uh, is really uh, it is really an example of how the entire uh, global community can actually come together uh, with a common cause and understanding to force an alliance that will actually tackle the most important issue of our of the generation, which is climate change, and and having uh, concluding the Paris Agreement gives entire humanity hope that you know you know if there is a will, there is a way. Uh, so since Paris, I think if you really look at Paris, Paris is really the blueprint for us to be able to get there uh, in order to keep temperature uh, below two degrees and uh, aspire to keep it at least minimum of 1.5 degrees uh, centigrade by the turn of the century in order for the country like mine and many other small countries like uh, the low-lying at uh, country, atoll countries like the Marshalls, the Maldives, the, the Kilberts, the uh, Tuvalu and all those small island countries uh, a chance to survive and not just the chance to survive but the chance to drive. Yeah. And, and uh, so since Paris, I think a lot has been done since Paris, but not in the same pace that we all want it to be. It, it is really, um, you know, sometimes we are really a, a victim of our own making because of all these, uh, um, you know, if you're trying to bring the entire global community together to agree on certain sets of rules, I think that's where we are today because uh, since Paris, we've been talking since 2016, you know, 17, and now we're in 2018. We're three years into Paris, and we have not yet seen the full potential of Paris Agreement because of, you know, we've been going back and forth and how the, the rule book for Paris should be. So this is really quite the, the challenging part of it. But I think we have to be continuously... Uh, uh, optimistic in a way yeah. for that the the leading up to the COP24 in uh, Katowice that we should be able to have uh, the blue uh, the uh, bl the rule book for Paris to be to be done so we can adapt it and move on. Yeah, and, and really to tap into the urgency of it because maybe we are not feeling that now. Do you feel like there's been better recognitions of the problems that the Pacific Islands and other vulnerable nations are facing? I believe so. I mean, just recently, as uh, last month, um, our president, uh, Dr. Hilda Haini, 
uh, was invited to the G7 uh, meeting in Canada along with uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Vietnam and they were uh, part of the, the small group of uh, uh, head of states you know, around the world that were invited by the G7 to be part of the, the, the dialogue or the discussions at the, at the margins of the G7. So that in itself is a recognition of the role we play as a, as a leader in the global climate movement as a small country and I think because of what we've been continuing to advocate on really resonate with, with not just uh, those that are, are in the same circumstances as we are but, but, the, uh, but the bigger countries like the G7 group, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, who lead a lot of that, that change and are responsible for the climate change. So what is your, your outlook and your feelings on current climate negotiations? Well, um, the, as I said earlier, the, we, in, in realistic terms, we are, we do not have yet uh, a draft uh, proposal to be tabled in Katowice in December this year. So we are, what, six months away? And there's a lot of work that needs to be done for us to be able to have a successful COP24 in Katowice. And, and the, the COP24 in Katowice, it's, it's really the COP that will, I think, to be honest with you, uh, make or break Paris Agreement. Uh, because everybody's, the entire global community, we're expecting a, a completed, agreed to uh, rule book for Paris so we can see the full potential of, of the Paris Agreement whether in, um, and, a very, and let, me, let me stress this very important point, the rule book, it should be focusing on four major important uh, components of the Paris Agreement, which is transparency and reporting, um, um, mitigation, adaptation, and climate financing. All of these four components are an integral part of how we are going to be able to see the Paris Agreement implemented. Because without these, and without any clear guide on how these things uh, move forward, or how we implement these things, then it's going to be, I would say, a wild, wild west, so to speak. Because there's really nothing to govern how we should you know, keep each other honest, whether you are meeting your target, whether you are you know, on your way to meet your NDCs or not. So those are the things that the, the Paris rule book will guide the entire uh, global community from wide range of you know, different people, different countries with different circumstances. So we are hopeful that our negotiators will, will be able to come together to agree on the, the way forward. Yeah. So, so, but again, I mean, if you look at it, we're six months away and we're looking at a, a, a rule book that is going to govern the implementation of Paris, I think it's important that we need to continue to send a signal to our negotiators that they, you know, what is important is we need to ensure that, you know, we may be bogged down in these discussions about, you know, where this might go or where, the, where that might go, but at the end of the day, we need to put a human face into all of this because the reason why Paris was agreed to, to save humanity, Mm -hmm. And if we are going to continue to bog down on these bureaucracies and, you know, semantics and this and that, then it really defeats the purpose of why are we trying to force a global alliance to combat climate change. So, so I think that's the thing that needs to be, to be recognized is that we all have to make sure that in spite of what we're trying to do, we need to put things one in mind. It's the people. It has to be a people-centric driven process because if we sometimes we get bogged down in all these things that I said semantics and the you know the bureaucracy and that and style and and then all of a sudden we we miss the deadline yeah and uh, you, there's a, a great role to be played by the climate vulnerable forum and and the announcement that's been made today and I'd love to hear a little bit about that south to south cooperation and how coming together as, as nations has played a role in that well, the, the CV of the Climate Vulnerable Forum is really in, in a very incredible 
uh, forum that was actually formed by these countries that are, they have, maybe have their different national circumstances that they're in, but what really brings these group, this group together is that because of the vulnerability that they face. Is if we don't do anything about climate change, they are vulnerable. And, and the message that we're trying to send is that you may not be vulnerable today, but you will soon be vulnerable. Because we may go first, but you're next. Yeah. So that's why this fight against climate change is a fight for everybody. It's not, not just for few countries that are adversely affected now. Now, the, the CVF uh, forum that we, we will be assuming the, the, uh, the chairmanship uh, starting in August, we have now decided to be, uh, do something different, completely uh, different from what, what has been done before. Because if you really look at what's been happening around the world, a lot of these, um, a lot of these uh, summits that are being done, you gather world leaders and you, know, you travel thousands and thousands of miles. And if you really look at that, there's a lot of these what we call carbon uh, footprints. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to utilize the existing uh, technology that they have, which is, the, which is the internet. And we're trying to do a virtual summit. And by not you know, re requiring leaders to travel thousands and thousands of miles, but we want them to actually log on to a website that we will be creating, and they will be providing their statement, whether in writing, whether in, in a pre-record, or go on live, stream live, and like what we're doing today. Yeah. So, so the entire global community can see these things. So we wanna, we wanna be different, we wanna be disruptive, we wanna be bold. So we wanna do something different that nobody has ever done. Yeah. And that's, it, it goes to show that you know, if you wanna fight climate change, you wanna do unconventional things. And this is, you know, this is as, as, a, as, though, as the country that is gonna be assuming the chairmanship, we wanna try new things. Because you know, there's a saying, if you continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over and expect a different result, then that's insanity, right? Yeah. So, so same thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to be bold, different, disruptive, because we want to disrupt the climate, uh, climate change today. We want to reverse the trend. And if you want to reverse it, you want to be different. Status quo is not the answer. Business as usual is not the answer. So we want to be different. So, I think actions speak louder than words, and that's why we're doing this. We want to be, we want to be different. So, so that's why we're convening this uh, forum. Thank you for sharing that. I love the disruption, and I think I want to continue this virtual conversation with everyone online who's watching. Could you give um, one final piece of advice to, to young people who are passionate about it, who are disruptive, who are thinking outside of the box? What's your advice to them about continuing um, movement and momentum towards climate action? Well, I, and I want to sp uh, speak to the camera. Climate change is a man-made, and, and the solution to climate change is also man-made. You know, we tend to make things very impossible. We have always two choices, whether we want to make things possible for it to be changed and have it to happen, or we want to make it impossible and make things difficult. So I think the choice is very clear. And if we are so passionate about, you know, reversing the trend on climate change, it's important that we actually make it you know, find the best solutions that everybody can agree on. And I think if we all can do it, and there is a will, there is a way. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for everyone for joining in online. Continue joining the conversation through Jeff Live. And thank you again. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.